Hello, everyone. Dylan and I are going to do something different than our normal podcast together. We decided to watch a full game of Yusuf Hyatt for Limages in their last game of the season against Lyon, who was the best team in the league. We're going to walk through about 30 clips from the game, uh, what we find interesting, break down different parts of his game, and how he fits at Michigan this season. So uh, we hope you enjoy and let's get into it. Limages is in white and Hyatt is uh, number 14 and Leon, who they're playing against, is in black. Um, this is him right here just for that first clip, but then you'll you'll pick up on it. All right, let's just let the first one play. All right. Um, do you want to talk about this one? Sure. Uh, or, uh, <laughs> he, he gets back well in transition. I think I don't I don't know that there's anything that crazy here. I think it's good that he stops the ball and gets in front and draws a charge. That's a good start. Um, bit of a soft charge, I would say a bit of a flop. But what's what's your <laughs> hot take on this first clip? Yeah, no, I, I agree. No, no hot take. Yeah, he he gets back to the nail, sees who uh, the man is that he should pick up does like one or two slides to the left to stay in front of his man right here. Um, and then, yeah, maybe a little bit of a soft charge. And that's something maybe we'll talk about more. Like strength is definitely one of his um, areas of improvement. Um, but in this case, it works in his favor because, you know, maybe it helps him draw the charge because he goes flying a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it was, it's a good play to stay in front. And another like small thing um, that I think you'll see more in some of the other clips is like, he's like really demonstrative in like a positive way, like with like clapping teammates and like that sort of stuff for the people that are into that. Um, it's like, like he'll celebrate he's, a good play. He'll like, he's like a real team guy. He's definitely a prolific high fiver. He's going around giving guys high. Like he, he'll get, he does the thing where he gets upset about someone wants to yell at someone, but then just gives everyone high fives. I feel like there's yeah. coaches that like track the number of high fives people get. He, he <laughs> would ace that test. He's always given all four guys on the court with him a high five at like any given time. You just watch yeah. him. He's giving high fives everywhere. Um, I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Definitely come up again. How much that is like a, I feel like that can be a little overrated, but it's, it's not a bad. Oh thing yeah. For sure. Yeah, exactly. I think it just speaks to like kind of how he is on the court um, more than anything. Um, okay. His next one's pretty simple. Um, but yeah, again, this is him in transition right there. So it's just it's just a catch and shoot three, right? Um, but the reason I included this clip um, is just to get like his footwork down, like how uh, what he prefers and like how quickly he can like get a shot off. And so this is the first three he took in the game. Um, so he's in transition and then he goes back out to the three point line, um, gets his feet set pretty quickly. But um, his preferred footwork is like a one two step. So the main footwork that shooters will have is one two versus a hop and um so you see here one two to um balance himself and pretty quick release um and I, I just like to look for that in players because like the more variability you have in your shot like you know coming off of screens or hop versus one two you like you can get them off in different situations quicker that sort of thing so just having a baseline of like how he likes to get shots off i think is um important and then obviously the type of shot so this is just a catch and shoot three which uh footwork is more useful would you say or is it just more it depends on the situation both? yeah, yeah it, like, it's better to have both obviously he does um, kind of the he steps back into a lot of his shots like he like this he like relocates out when like he's mm -hmm. always like stepping back and then gets into it i feel like he that's a very common thing because he's like an active cutter into the mm -hmm. lane and then he just kind of drifts out like he does here right he's his first instinct is usually to go to the basket or cut to the basket and then he just kind of floats out to the perimeter um I feel like his shot is generally pretty quick though. Like he gets into it and can get the ball up. I think pretty well, even on, like he's moving here a bit and knocks it down. I don't know. I, I he shoots the shit out of the ball in this game. Yeah, but, he, does. Uh, he uh, I, I, I think his shot looks pretty solid. Like I expect him to be able to shoot and make threes pretty regularly. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we got, we got, I got a lot of clips here. So this one, I, I think it's good to set a baseline, but um, yeah, I agree with everything you, you just said. Um, all right. This is, I think this one's a good one to talk about. Um, so again, this is him in transition here. Okay. 
So what, what do you see on this one? So one, I think that you see that he like never, he, I don't, I think his weak, like physically weak. And I think it comes up a lot when he's trying to finish. I think even at the start of this clip, like there'll kind of be a scrum for a rebound. He kind of just ends up pushed out of it and then just starts running down the court. Um, I, I think that he lost, like what I don't know about him is like, he runs the floor really well and he's an active, he's active running the floor, but I also think he doesn't really vary his tempo maybe enough. And I think he's always kind of heads down to the basket, but generally the fact that he gets out quick and gets downhill, like that's what you want to see. I would say it's just, I feel like his finishing is not that consistent, especially in transition, uh, like with some sort of defense around him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Um, like here would have been a, I like how he gets out in transition. I think he's definitely comfortable in transition. Um, it's just like, okay. So right here, like he should go up with the left um, if he wants to finish this. And he also has two guys that are like coming to contest, like not going up with the left here is a, is a very consistent theme. Like he basically never goes up with the left. He's not comfortable with it. And then, so he has a shot blocker that's coming over and he kind of just like tries to avoid the contact and finish as opposed to like, drawing the foul like mm -hmm. i would like to see either a lefty finish and maybe still getting the foul or like drawing the foul from 24 here um de the defensive player like he just tries to avoid the contact more and finish with the right as opposed to just you know taking the body and then finishing through it or um fin like, like doing that and finishing with the left um so i think that gets to your point about the um physicality improvements that he needs and, and improving his finishing um, mostly with the left hand yeah i think he does that sort of there are a lot of times he could go with his left hand and he kind of forces it to the right and he generally gets a lot less consistent when he does. Yep. Okay, so this is him guarding the inbounder and this, this is a defensive clip. Okay, so it doesn't really lead to anything, but I think this is a... Um, a good clip because it shows him as like a chaser. So he's guarding a guy who's coming around screens. Um, and again, it doesn't lead to a shot. And that's why I think there's so much value in watching full games. So you can um, like glean this sort of information. Cause this is not going to show up on like a synergy clip or a highlight or anything like that. Um, so he, he loses his man here. He doesn't stay attached. He, he's not physical with him. So there's like a huge gap, right. As he, as this guy comes off the screen, this could be a shot. Attempt. If this was a guy who was like, a, mm -hmm. excuse me, a more prolific shooter, he, he lost his man and, and this is a shot, um, a pretty open shot. Probably um, the guy continues forward and the big here makes a good play and um, hits the ball away from him. But uh, this was, they didn't have that many cases in this game of him like chasing guys around screens. So I wanted to include this clip and um, yeah, he, he just kind of got lost a little at the beginning and wasn't physical at all. So um, this guy could have, you know, it could have led to a good opportunity. It happened to not, but um, it, it's a data point for me. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting because uh, I feel like it must not have been all in this game, but he is in positions where he's chasing guys off screens a decent amount, which I think is a testament to, I guess, the role he's playing defensively. But I also feel like he gets caught on those screens a lot or is behind. And like, I don't know that he's actually, he gives effort, like he's trying to and make plays, but I do think like he gets screened a decent amount. He doesn't get around screens he doesn't always take the right angles and i think that's a data point but it's also a data point that he's guarding the player on the yeah. other team who's running off of screens and a lot of times that's almost the most important thing it's like that's what his team sees in him as his defensive role which i think is worth pointing out for a guy who's six eight and kind of like that as like a combo forward he's often guarding wings who are flying off of screens at this level at least yeah and even though he like kind of gets detached at the beginning, I think, cause he just doesn't see this guy cutting behind him at first. Like for someone, his size, his evasion of these two screens is pretty good. It's just that he's so far behind the play. Like you see his mobility here, um, which is definitely a good thing. It's just that, um, yeah, he just starts so far behind and he's not attached to that guy, like right here when he's beginning his cut and, and therefore he's behind. Um, but as mm -hmm. you said, yeah, it's good that his team trusts him in that role and he's mobile for his size and can really cover ground, which we'll see in later clips. Um, and there are a couple ones where he chases and does a better job. So, um, you know, this is in the beginning of the game. So it's like, I'm forming some of my opinions and like, this is, or like just forming them. And, and this is something is notable, at least that he has the effort. This is the kind of role they put him in defensively, but he didn't do a great job in this particular case. 
All right. Okay, so this next one, again, he's right here. Do you want to talk to this one or, or you want me to? Sure. Um, I'm, like, it's hard. When you're, you, it's easier if you talk through the clips when you're controlling them. Yeah, I, yeah, no, I know. I was just playing it once and then get back to the beginning again. So he's late to kind of contest on that three, but he's um, doesn't really get a hand up. And I think easily could be an open look. Um, guy just doesn't hit it. Yeah. Um, I was actually like, this is a good clip for me in terms of um, like trying to understand like his ability to recover and um, maybe like how much ground he thinks he can cover because, okay. So when this guy drives baseline here, right. Um, yeah. And I get that this is easier being me, the one who's controlling it. So like this, this guy helping, this would be the next guy to help in normally on this big who would then be open. So this guy would typically be the one helping. And then his job would be to zone up on this guy and this guy on the weak side, right? His man and then the corner man who was helping. But he decides to help here. I don't know if that's because he doesn't see this guy like that close to him or he just thinks like, okay, like I can help here and also get back out to both of these guys. Um, so to me, it's like partially role. Like, does he think he can, you know, help better than this other guy can? Or is he comfortable enough that he can, um, you know, he trusts his ability to recover out? Um, because this is kind of like an overhelp. Like he just doesn't really need to help here. Um, but he does, the, the pass is high, but he does get back out. Again, you know, you not knowing how good of a shooter this guy is, maybe they decided like we want to close out a little bit short. Um, but yeah, he doesn't get like right in his face. But again, he's long enough. Like this is a decent contest. Um, so to me, this is more just like interesting. Like, does he trust his ability to recover? Like, is he an overhelp type of guy, which could be a good thing. Like Franz Wagner overhelped some, or is this just the type of thing where like, you know, he, he's helping where he, the scheme kind of says that he, he shouldn't be. I, I, my guess just from what I've watched is that he's more of an overhelp guy. I'm not sure the level of which they're scheming that specifically to oh, no. have yeah. him, right? Like, I think it's probably his tendency is going to be to overhelp. And I think there's probably going to be a balance for him as he comes in, right? Like, it's one thing if you're Franz Wagner and you're about to be a pro and you're overhelping making plays everywhere. Something else that you're a freshman trying to get on the floor and don't necessarily have a role carved out and you need to be solid before you're overhelping everywhere. And I think that's going to be an adjustment for him because he does like to gamble a bit defensively. Um, mm -hmm. And he's agile and mobile and long and he can make things happen, but I think he tends to fly around a little bit when maybe Michigan system is generally more of a, conservative helping system i would say overall so it'll be interesting to watch yeah yeah i agree with that for sure okay so um leon played a bit of one three one zone so they're in one three one on this possession it's kind of like a scramble situation from when i started the clip but um just for the context so yeah just another catch and shoot three he's got plenty of space um Again, uses that one-two footwork. And I mean, yeah, it's clean. He, It's interesting because he had a really good shooting game, so you don't want to judge the results too much. But um, yeah, he, he definitely shot really well in this game. And yeah, it's a pretty clean look. He gets it off quickly, you know, on balance. And yeah, he knocks it down. Yeah, I don't, I yeah. I mean, not much more. Not much you that. can say about a guy making shots, right? Like it's yeah, good yeah, to make shots. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that... Um, I I don't know. It's really hard to just gauge I, how he'll shoot as a freshman, right? But I he shot it great in this game. You can't argue with that. Yeah. What was he? He was five or five for nine or five for ten from three. So the volume is notable one. And then yeah, obviously shooting well helps um, when you're when you're really focused on one player in, in this game at least. Okay. So yeah, I think this one's was really interesting. Um, I'll I'll play it through first. So he's right there again. They're in the one three one. I'm going to, I'm going to play one more time. Okay. I'll, I'll talk about this one. Um, so I like, 
the result here is t- obviously totally fine, right? Because he gets another open catch and shoot three, like uncontested. This one doesn't go in, but like, yeah, you can't argue with it. My thing was um, when he first catches it, right? So he catches it and then he passes it back out. So here he can shoot, right? That's definitely an option. Like this guy's pretty far from him. And also they're in the one, three, one. And the big is like wide open underneath mm-hmm. the basket. So he, he definitely misses a lot. This guy can catch lobs as you learn, like throughout the game. Um, so like, I'm pretty sure he could have thrown this and he has generally good vision. So I'm just curious whether he didn't see it or he just didn't throw it for whatever reason. You can't really argue with the result of the possession because he gets an open catch and shoot three. But I just thought it was interesting that he didn't pull here and he has this guy wide open and he, and he just doesn't pass it. You know, he gets it back a second later and shoots. But um, I just thought that was interesting that he didn't throw the pass. That's kind of a hard pass. Like that's across the defense. I don't know. Like, I don't think that's just the, it's not like he's missing a guy. It's wide not open. easy. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. 23 is there. Nine, is that dude wearing 93, which we can't do here, <laughs> but um, yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's an easy pass it to throw that. Like r- r- there's a split second where it's there, but I don't think it's easy. Um, So I'm not going to say like, he's just missing it, but I no, Yeah. Okay. I ahead. do think it's a trend though. After he makes a couple of threes, he starts to really fall in love with his three point shot, I think. And I think he just keeps taking them. And I don't know that he does that every game or it just seemed to be a thing that what he went to also, they're playing a lot of zone. So it's something to watch at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I didn't mean to say it was necessarily an easy pass, but I think it's definitely open enough. He doesn't really look at it though. Um, it was again, it's just a data point and, I thought somewhat notable. Also, I, I stopped the clip a little short, but after he misses that, he just takes, it's like, that's like a terrible, like take foul in, in transition right there. Those um, are the kind of plays that I think are going to be the big, like coming from this level where it's like, it's not an every possession matters type of thing, right? Like it's very much a developmental league. Like you make a mistake like that, in a big 10 game on the road and you'll be on the bench for the half. Like, you know I mean? Like that could be your second foul. You're out and it throws the whole game out of whack. I think those are the kind of plays that like, it reminds me of like Mo Wagner as a freshman, like he would just do stuff like that. And that was the kind of stuff that kind of kept him off the floor sometimes. And he does make some of those kind of plays. Like you don't need to take that foul. You're clearly not getting the ball. And he does stuff like that from time to time. So that's the kind of plays I worry about a bit for him, at least as a freshman. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I mean, to be fair, this is the only time we did it, this sort of thing in this game, but um, yeah, I mean, obviously not the type of play you really want, um, especially, you know, if you're in the bonus or that sort he of thing. He clobbers this um, kid too. This kid actually yeah, he does. is completely dead. And, and <laughs> look at his reaction too. Like he's just, he, he like, you know, reacts to the refs. It, so in everything, he's kind of like, like, you know, overly exuberant as a teammate, but he also is like, uh, you know, he, he's going to argue a call and you know, that's, I mean, that's fine. It's just this interesting to note happen for time to time i think there were points when he was with lebanon in the um asia cup like he would have moments where everything went well for him and he was like really into it and it was great and then there was moments where he just sort of missed a shot and then spiraled out a little bit and it kind of especially at that stage where he's going against grown-ups um i think it was notable like there were just times the game just kind of sped him up and he needs to he he plays fast and he plays hard, but it's, it's kind of that like being able to control your tempo and go fast when you want, but not when something else in the game speeds you up. Yep. Okay. So this is him right here on defense defensive clip again. This one had a lot of elements. So it was a good one. So first he's chasing this guy, right? He's guarding the ball screen, but it's, it's like a flare for that guy who set the first screen. He does a good job fighting over it, but then he's in help position later. So he's in the paint now. So, yeah, I think this is definitely an interesting one. Um, do, you, do you want me to play it one more time? No, you can talk through it. Um, okay. I, yeah. I'm curious what you think. Like, yeah, I, I think this is a good talk through. I think he's better as like a chaser around screens and like guarding ball handlers than he is like a, as a help defender, at least from this game. And this is, you know, previewing some of the other clips, but okay. So he, he does a pretty good job here, like getting over the screen. The guy, the guy doesn't really set a very good screen at all. He's kind of slips out. So th- that helps. Um, but he, I didn't see much as a help defender that was like very, cause he's long, you know, like the, the Franz label just naturally comes because he's like a European guy, but like, 
Okay, so if if I was like nitpicking on this drive, right, he's the primary helper here, like as the weak side low defender, his man is right here. He's just he's not in very good position right here. Like he should already be like at the top of this semicircle to cut off the drive, right? Mm -hmm. The guy passes early because his man like cuts the other side of the basket, so it doesn't like hurt him. In the Big Ten, this is like a dunk or a layup. Okay, like this this is a competition thing where this guy gets off the ground and shoots this like pretty slowly. Um, so it and ends he, up being a miss. It doesn't really like, it's not like he has the length that like, he doesn't really impact that shot. I would say like, it's not like he actually blocks it. He's just kind of there and in the way. And I think it's more about the fact that I can't see the guy's number, but they're like camouflage jerseys, but it's like, a, <laughs> he, uh, isn't a very good finisher more than like some great defensive play, right? Like he just kind of yeah. slides over into him. It could be called foul, honestly. Yeah, exactly. I, I agree. Um, yeah, it, this guy just goes up like, like you just focus on him. Like, look at his shot attempt. It's like, yeah, he goes up pretty weak. Um, so he does end up impacting the shot in that way. But I don't think it's like this is a good example of the co competition. And um, I mean, these are like really small nuances of defense. And like, you know, he's maybe not that comfortable or familiar playing in this role, so you can grow into it. But just being like a secondary rim protector, you know, you want to stop the drive, be able to recover your man, wall up high. And um, he just does an okay at best job of that. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't hurt him on this play, but this should be like a dunk or a layup on the drop off, I would say. Um, and uh, earlier in the drive, right? Like if he's outside the semicircle here, or at least like a little bit closer instead of here, um, he's in better position to recover too, not only to stop the, the driver. So he kind of just splits the baby but doesn't do that great of a job of it mm -hmm. anything more on that one or you want to move on no i i agree i just don't think he generally does his he's long and everything but i don't think he really has a big impact on plays around the rim with his length as much as maybe you would think and i i don't know if that's yeah. a strength thing a technique thing probably all of the above um but i don't think you should expect him to come in and like i don't know the more i watch him i don't know that he's a three or a four to be honest like he I, I worry that he, the level of physicality it would take to play the four in the big 10 I think could be a real issue for him and plays like this kind of show some of that I would say mm -hmm. yeah and again you know we haven't seen a huge sample necessarily so maybe he does better in, in in other games or that sort of thing um but just from the games that I've watched and partially that being um his uh play for Lebanon yeah that's an area where I think he you know, physicality, technique, that sort of thing. It, he definitely has room, room to grow. So I agree with you there. Okay, so this is him driving a closeout um, in the one through one This was like a super impressive play to me, like really good. Um, yeah, I think he has a couple uh, really this good. This is good drive and dish type of plays in this game like that's not an easy play to make and I, I like that he's always looking to pass like he is not just a he's he has a surprising amount of offensive skill like I think based on what you would see from like the the high level scouting report is you would think maybe better defensively but he can do stuff like this offensively which is pretty pretty impressive for a guy his size and age I would say yeah, for sure. And like, this doesn't matter who you're playing against, like reading this on the move and in air pass, like cross court, like they help really well on this play. Like this guy comes down and, you know, they, they have this cutter, he's reading the weak side and like to see that. And this guy is short, but the, the, the pass is high. That's the only critique I have, right? Like this guy has to mm -hmm. jump. If it's a better pass, he has a cleaner look. He makes the shot anyway, but like just IDing that pass on the move and in the air cross court is like super impressive, as you said, for his size and um an age. Yeah, to be fair, number six is pretty small though, too. Yeah, yeah. I said he that. I was trying to fight dudes <laughs> later in the game. Um yeah. All right. It, it is a little high. I mean, you passed to the target, but it, it's an impressive play. Um, and on the move passing like that is is definitely impressive. So he gets the, you know, bad pass steal. There wasn't really much defensively on this, but then, you know, this is a grab and go and transition. Um, and, you know, he does he have potential passing options? Maybe. But, like, this is a good play, I thought, right? Yeah, he, I think. He, he, 
yeah, like this is really good. Um, he's aggressive. He just goes to the hole. This time he draws the foul. Again, it looks like he's trying to go up with the right, but he doesn't shy away from the contact or the physicality. You know, he 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 draws that foul. Um, so I think that's what you want to see. And it shows to some of his ability and transition to be aggressive. Yeah, I, I think it's exactly what you want. Like they don't stop the ball. You go straight to the basket, you draw a foul. I think that's the kind of thing that you want to see. And it, he handles the ball well in the open court, gets downhill. He I mean, he yep. can move once he gets ahead of steam. Like he's a quick up and down the floor. Um, so I I don't think there's anything to complain about with that. Again, he is going with his right hand though. Every time he's going with his yeah. right. Yeah, and he and he does it later in the game. But um, just because we showed a clip where he kind of avoided the foul, like it's good to show that he has the ability to be aggressive and like draw the foul in transition too. Okay, and this is a. I think this is an interesting um, clip. This happens all the time to him. Yeah, exactly. It happens a bunch rebound. of times in this game. He's, he's not. A, he's not. He's not a good defensive rebounder. Like the numbers are fine. So, I think he averages a lot of right, rebounds, so, but he gets pushed off of so many rebounds. He just and he doesn't have a hands to grab it. Like, look, look at this. I mean, he just doesn't box out at all, right? Like, this is his man, twenty three, who's crashing, and he doesn't even look to locate the bot. So he he loses inside position right there, right? Mm -hmm. So this is his man. So he's just kind of relying on his length at this point. He does push him under a little bit here, but he's already lost inside position. So he just misses the box out. Um, and then it's just a free for all, right? Like it just, then, that guy was longer and it leads to a layup. Um, and in part because his, his, he, he allowed his man to get inside position and he doesn't put a body on him. Like this guy gets out strength and that's part of why they get the offensive rebound too. But at least he's like trying to box out. Like he just straight yeah. up misses it. And he just, he rarely comes down with the ball in situations like that, where it's like four people jumping for it. Like he's not some sort of super rebounder that just like can go high point the ball in a group in a crowd. Like he's tall, but I think that's a, he's like mostly what he's doing now. They're just pushing people around. Um, yeah. So I, I definitely like you see is, I think he ever, like the rebounding numbers are what they are, but I don't think, I think learning to rebound at the big 10 level is going to be an adjustment for him. Yeah. And this is something, I mean, the physicality is one thing, but like putting a body on guys is like a very easy thing that to teach if they're not doing it consistently. Um, yeah. you know, yeah. As I said, like the physicality to actually like keep he inside position and stuff in the big time, he'll be on right. the bench. <laughs> yeah. Like dude, Terrence Williams is just going to push, push him under the basket and practice a few times. He's gonna be like, shit, well, I got to like get more aggressive. And I don't think he like has problems like with like engaging and stuff. He's just like pretty weak. Um, and here he just doesn't see it, but like, um, he's willing to be physical. I would say he's just not that strong right now. Um, here, he, yeah, he just misses it. And like, even just jumping for this, look at his, like, um, like how he falls to the ground. I mean, he doesn't fall, but like he gets pushed yeah. off the spot. Right. Like he's just not that strong. Like his core strength, he just gets pushed off balance and like, it might not look by much, but like, if he is more balanced here, he can maybe contest this shot right here, but he's just so far behind that. It's like, it's like too late for him. Um, so just 24 small is like not that. race Thompson 24 is just some dude in the French youth league. Like who's like 20 years old. Yeah. There's exactly. going to be a lot more physical players in the big 10. Um, even it's not just like, yeah, like going against the, the fives in the big 10 It's I think the level of physicality that experienced players at like the three and the four in the big 10 will bring to the game is going to be a kind of a culture shock to him. Um, yep. just because of how the game is played over there. Yep. Okay, here's another offensive clip. Again, they're in the, the one three one. They played the one three one for like two thirds or three fourths of this game. So um, more like closeouts and zone decisions, but I think you can still glean a lot of information. Okay, so that's him, the cut. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so I, I thought this was a go ahead. No, go ahead. I can say, so this is a good cut, right? Like they triple team this dude. So like he has space. If this guy was a better passer, I mean, it's, it's a good cut um, to see that he doesn't get the ball. It's not his fault. Obviously he's kind of in no man's land in the middle there, but it's okay. And I mean, this is just like a, a really good finish. I know he has no bodies around him, but just the body control to like catch it in the air and shoot like all in one motion. Um, yeah, I mean it, it's just a, a, a good play. Um, yeah, again, no one sticks yeah, a body on the zone, but I, I like I like this. I hate when people play zone and stuff like this. It's just kind of a waste. Like I 
you want him kind of floating around the middle of the zone. Like that's probably what he's taught to do. Um, right. I do think he has really good touch from kind of like the floater range yeah. and the like where he is now, like kind of right around the semicircle. Like that's actually where he's actually he's almost more comfortable than finishing all the way at the rim. He has a lot of floaters in his game and things like that. So he does have nice touch around the basket, maybe not at the basket. And that's what you see a little bit of here. Um, yeah. So I, I just, I just hate this. Zone. Like it's a waste. Like, it's like you go to a high school game to watch, to evaluate someone. And the other team just plays his own. It's like, what are we doing here, people? Um, but <laughs> yeah. that's it's good. I think he is active. I just think it shows, like, offensive decisions are more programmed, I feel like, in zone, right? Like, it doesn't show the same sort of feel for the game always that maybe you get. So I, I do think he has good feel and good cutting, and I, it's somewhat here, but I just, whatever. Yeah. Get out and of the that- zone. <laughs> and I, I think you previewed a point we're going to see a bunch throughout the rest of this game. So I don't want to get too much into it, but um, he has, he has, he has really good touch actually. Um, and I think actually this clip might show that more, but uh, let's see it. Yeah. Yeah. That shot. Yeah, he, a- he has that shot. He makes that shot in multiple different. Again, though, it's going to his left with his right. Um, yeah, it's that's tough as hell. He makes it. He has that floater in his bag, so to speak. Yeah, so this is like secondary transition. They're like pressing a little bit, and then they drop into the one three one. So it's it's like attacking a closeout essentially, right? Like this guy's closing out, but he has the advantage. So it's like, okay, he has a two on one here. Like, let's see what he does in these type of situations. Like again, he he probably has the lob, but I mean, if you're comfortable with this shot, you can't blame him for taking it if he makes the res- makes it. But like. I mean, generally, this is a fairly low percentage shot, right? It's like contested, moving to his left, floater from eight feet. Like, if you were to just see that on paper, you'd be like, that's kind of not a good shot. But, I mean, at least from what I've seen, he has such good touch on these that, like, I mean, that was really nice. Um, Yeah. So so you could talk about process a little bit, but, like, yeah, you can't argue with it if if he makes that consistently. And, and yeah, you previewed it in the last um, clip. Like, he just has good touch on these types of shots. Okay, so this is um, him chasing, and he does a lot on this possession. And he's guarding like the this guy's premier like, wing the, on the, the other the three, team. right? Like he's usually yeah. guarding the other team's best wing. I think that's the most important point of all the defensive clips. Yeah, this is. I actually posted this one on Twitter, but this is probably his one of his best defensive plays in this game, if not the best, because he just does so much stuff during it. Like, so he's chasing this guy right around screens basically denying the pass here stays with him enough they're trying to get this guy the ball and he's Mm -hmm. denying him the ball right and then now he's the low man on the weak side they just set up a ball screen right here so his job is to tag this guy yep stay with him and then recover once the pass is made to 23 so he's in the paint and i mean this guy he's waiting for the um screener defender to recover he he sees him come back and then gets back out to contest the shot I mean, it's like an okay contest, but like, look how much ground he covers, like in the air. Like, he he does a really good job of covering ground, and that's why some of the overhelping stuff I'm I'm generally okay with, at least at this level, because I think he's confident that he can get back out to shooters pretty well. I think sometimes he's late to get his hands up when he closes out, though. He closes out with his hands down a lot, and he got they made yeah. like just especially when there's eleven on in the Asia Cup, I like people made jumpers over him when like. Like he's late to contest. I feel like a little bit there. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. That that like he covers the ground. He's there. He just needs to have his hands up. And I think that would be something that like like right there. He's like I don't know. He's pretty far I, away. Yeah. I, I think, think he's like a split second fair. late, and then he's a little far. But I think that I just don't think he's like as impactful when he closes out as you might think. Um, but I do think it's a great defensive possession. I think it's really like he's a perimeter defender. And I think that's the point. You just keep hammering home, watching him play. Like he's much more of a three than a four in a lot of ways, I think. And I think I keep coming back to that. And I don't know if that's really conventional wisdom. Yeah, I I agree. Like just see like how comfortably he denies and gets through screens on this. Like he's, he's way more of a perimeter defender despite his size. And he is like a four guy who's like a secondary rim protector. You know, he's just like a big Mm -hmm. guy who can chase and um like get over screens and stuff so i think that length is more impactful there than as a you know given his like weak frame as a protecting the basket necessarily um 
but yeah, yeah that, I, I think it was that. a good clip, but you, you make, you made a good point um, on the closeout, um, especially if you saw that in the Lebanon stuff, like he's long. So, you know, maybe from here, he thinks he can still impact the shot, but he's look, he his hands are like behind his back. Yeah. So I don't know that I didn't think that could be something to at least keep an eye on. Yeah, like, no, definitely. Does he impact shots when he closes out or does he, is he just kind of there? All right, another defensive possession here. Here he is on the you were, weak side. I again. never expected to dive so deep into the <laughs> defensive intricacies of uh, French youth basketball. Hey, man, that's what we're here for. You know, this this one's probably even better than the last one, honestly. Oh, my God. Another okay. rebound he doesn't get. Yeah. Okay, so he's in the same position as the – the last clip ended where he's the low weak side defender again mm-hmm. on a ball screen. So his job is to tag this guy. Um, so yeah, one like recognition, like you take it for granted, but sometimes players just don't see that stuff, especially when they're young, knowing his role. So he's well coached and he understands that. So does a good job. And as soon as he sees the ball being thrown to his man, he's recovering, right? Mm-hmm. The, the pass gets bobbled. So, you, you know, it's like a pretty easy closeout, but he's there. And then, like, good mobility, right? Like, he cuts this yeah, guy off. Yeah, he stays off. in front. This guy clearly doesn't have a great handle, but still, I mean, he stays in front, makes him put it behind his back, and kick it back out. Like, that's that's all you want. It's like a perfect tag and closeout. Um, yep. And then, yeah, if you want to talk about the rebound. He's just, again, he's there. Doesn't grab it. Um, I'm worried about his rebounding. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, and this one, like, his guy doesn't crash, so it's more just like he is just trying to grab it, but um sorry that was the last clip i just don't think he like he doesn't have great hands when he grabs those sorry yeah i mean he definitely has a chance to grab this one and doesn't so yeah you can yeah again so so it's it's another data point right on the rebounding stuff so (laughs) um but that one at least he didn't like miss a box out like his guy crashed so it was was okay um and his team still gets the rebound but yeah okay all right, he, he grabs the rebound here <laughs> with no one really around. He is, he's good at those little flip ahead passes. He is one of those later yeah. in the game too. Um, yeah, there's not too much with this one, but um, I mean, they all collapse around him. He sees the open guy, good touch on the pass to lead him. It seems easy, but like he's coordinated, right? Like he's 6'9". He throws it on the move and it leads to a layup. Like it was a simple read, but it's still like fairly impressive um that he you know he, he's dribbling he with did, his head up he's pushing the ball and he's finding the open guy the fluidity to do that to rip and run start to break and then see the floor like a lot of guys his size all they really have is to just put their head down and drive to the rim if they're going to do that he does see the floor and gets out like and he's again he's a willing passer he's looking for guys that are open and i think he finds them yep Okay, so this dude gets like quadruple team on this clip. I like I did not expect to see this play. Like this was really nice. He starts feeling his jumper, man. He's just ready. To and this is in the second half, though. Like he had, we haven't had an offensive clip besides that transition one in a while, right? It's after halftime, so it's not like he just yep. made a three or something. Mm-mm. Um. So again, this is attacking a closeout in the zone. But it, it's smooth, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, like he has the advantage on the catch, right? Like this guy's closing out uh, to 11 here. Mm-hmm. And, and he attacks it. No one's like wide open. Like, yeah, he could have passed the 17. But like, I'm totally fine with the decision here if he's comfortable in the shot. Um, and it just, it's super smooth. Again, he goes to the one, two in terms of his footwork. Like, yeah, it's just it's just a really good clip. And, like, I, I just didn't see anything about his, like, um, how he attacks closeouts and stuff. And, like, like he's decisive. Like, he knows the shot he wants to get into. It's super clean, the pickup. Moving to his right, which is generally harder for right-handed shooters. Like, good elevation over the contest and, and nails it. Like, it's just a really impressive play. And, like, I, you know, you don't want to expect this from him, like, regularly. But it, it's awesome that he has this in the bag. Yeah, he's going to be in situations – to attack closeouts right like that's sure. what wings do in michigan's offense so i he does and i think it, you notice like he can do different things right we've seen him drive downhill and 
kick it across against the zone. We've seen him go to this. Like, I think that's the most interesting thing is that it like some guys are only going to one thing, right? Like they're going to go to their all hard to the right hand and try to get all the way to the rim, or they're going to do this. I think he is pretty good offensive versatility in that he has a couple of different options and he seems comfortable going to different things, which I think is definitely something you want to see. Yep. I agree. All right, next defensive clip. So again, this is a small one, but so he's chasing this guy, right? He he stays in front again on a dribble move, right? Flipping his hips here once, which he doesn't do much in this game. So you just want to try to gauge of how good of mobility he has on the crossover, right? So he's deterring anything from really happening. And then there's a ball screen and, nice I, you know, this is more, yeah, they switch it so that they do have some comfort in him, at least guarding fives. Um, it is late clock, it's right? Late, so it's only yeah. five seconds. So maybe it's like an under 10 second or under eight second thing. Um, but yeah, it's just notable. Like they communicated out, he's guarding the big, um, the guy throws it away, but the mobility and then, you know, that they have him switching on the fives, at least late clock is, is interesting to me. Um, I definitely think it's a late clock thing. Um, yeah. Cause he kind of, even 13 really gets up and pressures the ball. Like it's clearly kind of like a late, um, uh, yeah. I think the mobility is more important at the beginning of the possession, yep. like deterring a drive from even happening. Um, Again, you know, you don't know the exact quality of the guy with the ball, but like he does his job. He stays in front like really well. So um, definitely good. I think this is his only one of only. his only ball screen plays this whole game. Yeah. Um, but like, again, that's not like an easy, like he gets downhill, gets two feet in the paint, finds the guy. That's what, that's what you want to see from your, four man if he can run ball screens right like i think that's this is a pretty impressive play yeah i totally agree yeah like it, he makes it look simple but like six nine guys doing this is like is impressive like he finds he sees where the help is coming from right away right like he sees this guy in his face so it's a fairly easy read but like as you said like he gets in the paint on the move literally perfect pass right and and, and leads to an open three so it's a simple read, but he he makes it in a timely way. He sees it right away. And um, it's, yeah, just a good play. And as you said, there aren't many ball screen plays to go from. So um, I think there's one or two maybe later, but uh, you, you can't really ask for any more on this. And he even does like a little bit of a, because you, you want to see like how, how much is he able to create separation like off the screen, like his setup for the screen. And like, it's fine, right? Like he has like a couple through the leg crosses and like, it doesn't create a big advantage, but like he has like a half step or something like this guy doesn't need the help, but I mean, he does. And it leads to an open kick out. So definitely a good play. Yeah. And he's not going to be like a run 12 ball screens again guy, but in different spots, you can put him in a ball screen. I think you can make something happen and a weird and create some matchup issues. Yeah. I, yeah, exactly. Like, I don't think it's gonna be a big part of Michigan's offense, but it shows that he has maybe the potential to do some of this stuff in the future and like some simple reads, like he can, he can do that, even if it isn't a big, you know, feature of his game right now. So baseline out of bounds or he is. Like, these are the plays where like the pull up and this, it's like, damn, like he's a better shooter than I think people thought. Like, one, the fact that they're running him off of a screen like this and the fact that, like, this is, like, a really heavily contested shot and he is willing to shoot it, even if it isn't the highest percentage, right? Like, look at the organization of his feet on this, too, mm -hmm. to stay balanced and make it. Like, so, yeah, it isn't the highest percentage, but the fact that they're running him off of something like this and he's comfortable shooting it is impressive and he also hops on this one so different footwork off off of a screen anything else on this one no i and i think i mean the thing to remember is like you run baseline of balance with your best player he's clearly their best player so i i don't know like what that means 
at a level where he's maybe not the best player on the floor, right? Like, I don't know that you'll see him being Michigan's primary option out of baseline out of balance plays, but he can, the fact that he can knock down shots on off screens contested, like that's, it's a good time. Yeah. And one thing I didn't mention, but look at, at, at the very beginning, what he does with his arms, right? So he's pushing him. He pushes the guy off of him to create space to go around the screen. Like that's where he gets the separation from is that push off. So again, willing to be physical um, with this guy who is definitely not a strong, strong guy by any means, but he's like willing to mix it up, even if he isn't the strongest. Um, and that creates separation. Cause this is like not really a screen that he gets here. Yeah. He, he but, creates the space for himself basically. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just, yeah. A, a good thing to see. I mean, this, he's just on fire at this point, but, uh, fairly heavily contested he gets foul he gets the foul call on it but just willing to pull from here and yeah, then you I see mean, the you see the celebration a little bit here too i don't know like he shoots it really well in this game but what do you think his offensive role is like what else does he do offensively it's basically going to be like attacking closeouts and coming off of like, I don't know. Like, it, I don't see – he doesn't have a way that he, like, creates a lot of offense in this game other than knocking down jumpers, I felt like. And I think he becomes pretty jump shot heavy. Um, I'd like to see him get downhill a little bit more, um, but he also made, like, five of ten threes. So what are you going to say? Yeah, I think – I mean, he's definitely more of a possession finisher with room to grow into more. But, um, I mean, if he can get some of his offense in transition, just grabbing and going off of rebounds um, and sometimes just filling the lane or, or, or running out to three for catch and shoot threes, attacking closeouts, maybe, you know, as you said, he's an active cutter. So, like, I think there's ways he can get offense, even if it's not creating that much for himself. And then maybe growing into a guy. So maybe this year he gets, like, one or two ball screens a game, like at most or something, um, growing into more of that as he gets more comfortable. Because as, as we've seen in these clips, I think physicality and some of that stuff is going to be an adjustment for him. And that will ultimately dictate how much he's able to really play. But, um, I mean, he has the upside that he's showing with some of the DHO and ball screen stuff that he can grow into having a bigger role, whether that's, you know, later in this year, next year, like whatever, you know, however that ends up working out for him. Yeah, I think that's fair. And I, I guess more what I'm saying is I think he's shown a lot more as kind of an off ball cutter in other games I've seen. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's because of how Leon plays or what, but it, it was a little less of that in this game um, overall. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fair. And again, that was the one-two footwork. So a lot of the catch and shoots show, shows his preferable footwork is the one-two. Okay. So this is again another like poor rebounding clip. Um, right. So this guy gets a kick out pass. This is his man. Just does not put a body on him at all and just jumps for it, right? Mm-hmm. That is that guy ends up tipping it and they get a second possession, right? Quickly, if he wants to play at Michigan, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yep. Um, so I I mean I just stop it here, but that second possession is basically entirely because his man tips the ball out and he gets pushed under when when uh he doesn't his, his guy comes to take the rebound. Yep. So again, it's just a couple clips, but it it shows the tendency that he's not um, finding the body on these. By the way, they like lost the big lead in this game. Um, so these extra possessions ended up mattering. Um, They're up a decent amount in the fourth quarter. So. Um, all right. Can with that floor. It's, I, that's, yeah, it, it cuts off, but he this goes in. Yeah, this is a really good play. This is more what I think he shows more of in other situations I've seen him in, where he gets downhill um, mm -hmm. on the move and has that kind of in between shot in his arsenal. Yeah. So first, yeah, I, I agree, and it, this shows like the cutting relocation ability too. Like, yep. his man's helping in, and he sees that he should cut along um the three-point line to make this pass easier 
So look how long this closeout is, right? Like if he wanted to, he could easily set up to shoot this. Um, you know, to your point about wanting to shoot threes and stuff, um, or like settling for threes, he, he could shoot this three, um, but mm -hmm. he decides to attack instead. So like, you know, this is probably a little bit of a harder shot than a catch and shoot three would have been, um, because there's no one really to pass to on this. Um, so interesting that he decided not to shoot, even though he's having a really good shooting game. Um, and then, I mean, dude, the touch on this is pretty sick. Um, yeah, he has great touch. Like he's shooting this with off his, um, this is like an off leg floater too. Like normally, you know, you go off your left here. Like he, he mm -hmm. shoots it to his right using his right and like organizes his body and, and makes the floater here. So yeah, I think, yeah, we, we said it earlier, but his touch is really good around the basket in that like four to eight foot range. And he's more comfortable like with that floater as opposed to like trying to like find a body and like finish through contact or draw a foul, um, at least at this stage. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. So, I mean, not much to talk about again, but another he quick shot release. The shit out of the ball in this game. Yeah, one, two, over a contest. I mean, it's just, yeah, he, he just shot really well. And that one was a little deep, too. All right, so we're down to the last, I don't know, five or five clips ish. This is a good defensive yes, play. They're up eight and they end up losing this game. So, yeah, they blew it late. Um, okay, so he's right here. So he deflects the kick out, right? He's helping, which off the strong side corner, you generally don't want to do. But I mean, he does a really good job, right? He doesn't fully commit like he's stunting, but his length here, he tips the pass. So it completely negates any sort of advantage. And he's right with his guy slides to stay with him again. He shoots a step back and he contests it like another really good defensive play. So, yeah, I mean, you, you question maybe the skill level of some of these wings, but um this is like another clip of the ground coverage where he's deflecting a pass with his length, getting out to his man and contesting the shot. Yeah. I, I do think like it shows he tends to gamble like in the, at the big 10, like in Michigan system, you're not going to want to over help on that kind of play. Right. Like that's, that's the one thing I would worry about with like some of his tendencies defensively. Yeah. I, I will say, I mean, he's long, like even if this is a clean pass to the corner, like, he it's not like a terrible situation like he doesn't put two feet in the paint and like fully yeah fully commit. It, it's a little bit of an overhaul probably especially from like the strong side corner but it's not like yeah he trusts his length to get out there um but i think that is notable like if he does have that tendency to overhelp and watching that he is watching a, for he, that he I just guess. likes to help and that that could be good right like michigan doesn't really have an impactful help defender um like as an off the ball kind of person. So I, I do think like that's not the worst thing. Uh, like no one else really has the length to be disruptive in some of these ways on the roster. So it's something to, to keep an eye on. And it'll be a balance, I think, um, for how he learns to adapt to Michigan's scheme. Because again, he's the summer behind, right? He doesn't have the time to have been, he doesn't have 10 practice under his belt. He hasn't played in games. I think that it's going to be an adjustment for him when practice starts, whatever this coming week or whatnot so something mm -hmm. to think about within the big scheme of everything is okay here's this kid who has some tendencies that can be useful but are not necessarily by the book and what does that mean when you're already behind as far as reps in practice um that's i don't know what the answer is to that but i guess we'll find out yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good point. Um, like he has these skills, but like, is his physicality going to be able to like catch up, I guess, to be a meaningful contributor this year? Like, I, I don't know. I don't think any of us could know unless we were at practice, but he is behind the eight ball in terms of practicing with the team and that sort of yeah, stuff. I don't think they know he didn't, he hasn't been at like, he, right. Yeah. They never <laughs> he didn't met get him. to practice this summer. Um, they yeah. have, I'm sure they've had workouts since, but practice starts coming up and then we'll actually see, right. Like that's, that's the thing. Yeah. All right, so he's guarding the ball to start here. Yeah, another one of those kick-ahead passes. 
Yeah, just a quick read. But again, like he's guarding a ball handler in a screen situation, goes under and then he fights over, right? He recovers quickly because he gets, I mean, like he gets hit fairly hard on this or not hard, Mm -hmm. but it it sets him back, but he covers the ground quickly. And even though this guy's shooting a pull-up, like he has a hand in his face, right? Like that's his hand contesting. So that definitely alters the shot. Yeah, definitely a good play. And then, I mean, it's a pretty easy rebound, but gets it. He sees his guy leaking out. No one's back and immediately throws the pass. So, yep, again, good play. And then this the is celebration, this, too. Yeah, he's very fired up, and then somehow they don't win the game. Because um, this <laughs> is right, like they're going up a 12, right? And they 12 with sh- under five should, minutes left. Should have win, won this game. Yeah. Okay, so here's him as a as a help defender right here, guarding a big, I think, after a switch or something. Just just not much resistance there, right? Like he should get off of his guy sooner to help because this guy's like wide open, right? Like put two hands up, try to yep. contest. He he's just late, right? He's you know, this guy's probably not a, gr- a great finisher, so he doesn't try to score. He leaves um because he's in this help position late it opens up the drop off um and where he can't recover like he gets spun around when he's like you know contesting or whatever so on the pass he can't like get back into it and contest it right um so if he stepped up sooner he'd be able to wall up force the pass and get back to his man or or number six even though he's small is like helping down on this guy like these are just like the small micro decisions on defense where he could be in better position and yeah i mean like the, he's gonna get taught this right like he's young still it's okay that he's making these mistakes but i just think the reputation because uh, just because of his size he's better as a perimeter defender than he is like as a help defender every one of these help possessions he's helping from on literally like under the basket, like he's in the restricted area where it's too, he's too, he's too deep to actually make an impact on most of these plays. Um, so yeah, it's, and this guy gets beat like clean, like this screener defender doesn't do anything. So like he should be in help here. Um, I mean, yeah, it's not the first breakdown isn't on him, obviously that looks like some Hunter Dickinson defense, but uh, yeah, he's got to be out in, in help sooner. So, like, when you watch him in this game, where do you see him playing? Like, what – is he a four to you? Is he a three? Within the scope of Michigan's system um, on offense and defense. Like, who – say you're playing, I don't know, who's the roster we know? Indiana. Like, what's – where does he go? Like, if he's on the floor, Michigan, Indiana, what's he playing on offense? Who's he guarding? Um, I Because I don't know. I – the more I watch him, the less I, I feel like I have a good sense of it. Originally, I was like, "Oh, he's exactly kind of this combo forward guy." Michigan needs a combo forward who can make shots and do different things. But I mean, if you're gonna put him and Jet Howard on the floor together, I don't know how you Hunter Dickens better get every rebound um, because no one else is gonna get her. And maybe that's the answer. Maybe it's like, okay, no one else can rebound. Hunter Dickinson can. And that's what you can get out of him defensively. But I worry about. I'm already think that it's fair to worry about Michigan's rebounding without Musa, without Devante. Like those guys were the second and third best defensive rebounder on the team last year. And now Jet Howard, I don't know if he got a rebound when they were playing in uh, Europe in two and a half games. Uh, Terrence Williams, I think can be a good rebounder, but he's not really gifted with size or athleticism or like verticality. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you, what, what do you think of like where he fits in that whole mix? Um, is it just like no one really fits in any spot? You just put them all out there on the floor together? Yeah. I mean, I think we've kind of talked it out that he's like defensive. Like if you want to talk about defensive position, I think it's more clear, like because of his rebounding shortcomings, physicality, at least to start. And like his ability to chase guys and get over screens as like a um, point of attack guy more than a help defender that he's much better suited to play the two and the three than the four. Like, I think he's pretty clearly like able to guard twos and threes. And then if it's a more perimeter oriented four, he could guard that sort of player. Um, so I think anywhere two through four, but leaning more towards like the two and three side, like given we like everything we've said about the rebounding stuff and his ability to chase and stuff. Um, and then offensively, I don't think it matters that much. He can do anything two through four. Like they have so much ball screen related things that like, you know, if you want to give him a couple, it could be at any spot. And if he's, 
attacking closeouts or finishing possessions, I think offensively, it doesn't really matter where he is two through four. Um, I think just naturally, like he would play like the three maybe, but like, I don't think those designations matter as much offensively as they do defensively. Yeah. I could almost see a situation where this might be a hot take. You have, (laughs) you play Terrence, Yusuf and Jet together. Yusuf plays the four on offense. Terrence plays the two on offense because he can like handle the ball a bit, dribble the ball a bit, knows the plays, knows what's going on. And but Terrence guards fours, Yusuf guard, and then like you have Yusuf and Jet guard perimeter guys. Um, what do you think? I think defensively that makes a lot of sense. I don't know why you'd play Terrence at the two. It's not like I mean I think Yusuf's a better like ball handler and does it doing that sort of stuff on offense. I mean I like, again I don't pressing, think it matters. Like if like I mean Terrence, Terrence has like played very in that spot dominant. before. Yeah I know, but I just think like the he, fact that he knows what's going on. I think you're gonna want to at walk before you run with Yusuf offensive. Like I don't think you want to put him in a spot where he feels like he has to do eight things. Uh, I think if he can do two things really well, that would be a best case. Uh, whereas Terrence, I don't think you want him to do anything all the time, but you give him a little bit of everything and it may be all right. That's, I, I just wonder, can you play these guys? Can you play any of these twos and threes without Terrence? Like, is Terrence Williams the only way to get more physical at the four with this kind of combination? Because that's what you're looking at, right? Yeah. I, that's I mean, the I, question I think is how does everything else work if, Jet and Yusuf are allergic to rebounding. Yeah. I mean, if he's a three, it's going to matter less because they're not going to be crashing as much. So I think it's okay. But like the defense, like if the, if it's the lineup, right, where it's Llewellyn and Hunter at the one and the five, and it's the other three, I think it's exactly what you said defensively. Like Terrence is very clearly guarding the four and then he's guarding the two or the three with Jet. You know, he's probably going to guard, Yusuf's going to guard the better offensive player, whoever that is. I don't think it really matters. Um, and then... Yeah, offensively, I guess, is more of an open question, uh, but I don't think it matters as much. It's, it's more like you are who you can guard, and I think he's guarding more twos and threes than he is fours if the four is, a, is like a physical one. Like, he could guard like a like a Pete Nance. I know he's like at UNC now, but like, um, like I feel like he could guard that type of four, but maybe not like a Race Thompson type of four who's like more going to play near the paint and, and isn't as perimeter oriented. Like, you know, he's not running ball screens or running around screens. Um but yeah, I mean, I generally, I think I agree with you. I think you're overrating Terrence's offensive skills a little, but. Um... No, 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 no. I'm not saying anything about offense. I'm saying, like, can, will Juwan Howard feel confident with his team's kind of defensive setup without a real four on the court? And is Terrence Williams the only four? I think Terrence roster? Williams, I think Terrence Williams is best suited as a four. So that makes sense to play him as the four. What if in he's that, off the like court? in that specific What line? if he's off the court? Yeah. I don't know. Will they put Kobe I mean, Buff? Get, like, I don't know. That well, Co- yeah. Like, oh, you're saying like, can he play the four, four with those it? other guys? And that's what I, that would be originally what I would have kind of pigeonholed okay. him for a minute opportunity. And I have a hard time seeing him play without someone being a little bit more of an enforcer next to him, I guess. That's kind of what I'm getting at more than anything. I'm not trying to talk about the offensive fit with Terrence, whatever. Okay. That's fine. I just wonder like, can he play this the four without This is going to be kind of a basically. finesse team at the two, three, four in a way that I can't really like. Last year's team was not that right. Like it was Musa Diabate, who was a very for whatever he was, he was a very good defensive rebounder, and it gave Michigan like Michigan dominated the defensive glass against everyone to the point where it wasn't even really worth trying to offense rebound because they had these two giants in the middle. So I think it's going to be rebounding is a something that needs to be talked about. Where I don't I don't think Jawan Howard's going to be okay with not being a good rebounding team. Um, and I'm curious how that, how they get there and what lineup combinations work to get there. Um, and I don't yeah, think, I think that's a good question. And I, I don't, don't and I don't have the answer. answer to those because right. Like even like Llewellyn's not going to rebound like Devante, like Devante had a nose for the ball. So that helped. Uh, I think Hunter's going to have to average like 15 rebounds a game. And all honesty, he's not, we'll and see. he's not that good of a rebounder, honestly. I mean, he's just, he, it helps because he's just huge. But, like, he doesn't rebound well outside of his area at all. So, I think that is a good question. Like, they have a lot of defensive questions for me. But, like, rebounding could definitely be one. Especially because if you thought he could play, like, backup four, I don't think that's his best suited position. I think he could do it, right? Like, it depends on the matchup. But it's – he's way – you know, I keep saying it, but he's way more of a perimeter defender than he is a 
interior defender. Um, but yeah, if, if it's like a team that's stretching with their four and not really crashing the glass, I mean, I'm sure he can guard that sort of player where he's just like, you know, as you, like, as he's done in these clips, right? Like he's helping on a perimeter shooter, tagging the roller, getting back out to a shooter. Like he can do that totally fine. Um, so maybe it's just more matchup dependent. Um, and Terrence plays a ton of four in the matchups against, you know, beefier, like more interior um, base fours. Or maybe you play Jet, Yusuf, Terrace Reed, and Hunter Dickinson. There you go. <laughs> All right, we're there's, not getting there yet. There's your there. rebounding combo right there. My favorite yeah. thing um, was I was listening to one of Phil Martelli's, he did an interview somewhere, and he was talking about Terrace playing with Hunter and because they played together for some minutes in a couple of those games overseas. And I think he said something about like, yeah, we didn't practice it all, but once the game started, somehow we just ended up playing it, which is exactly what I think of some of the two big lineups oh, that Michigan has played at different times where they're literally just a, a combination of the uh, like factors in the game that just lead to it, like substitution patterns or whatever else. And it's not even something that's really well drilled, but I guess over there, he said that, when they played together, Hunter was basically the four and Terrace was the five offensively. Wow. Cause that makes sense, right? Cause Hunter could shoot. Could shoot. So Hunter yeah. was based the floor and then Terrace was the anchor. Um, but I do think Terrace will be a good rebounder. So even when Hunter's off the floor, having a five mm-hmm. that gets most of the rebounds will help, but it's something to think about because yeah, it's going to be an obvious area where this team has more probably wings and perimeter options and can play some smaller lineups, but you are, it is a trade off there. Yeah. And, it, it, you know, we're getting off on a little bit of a tangent, but like we haven't mentioned Joey Baker. I can't say I'm like s- super well versed on his game. I know generally like what his strengths are, and he's not known as a defender for sure. But like, you know, he's a college, he's 22 or whatever, and he's been in like a very good college system. Like, I'm sure he has at least some baseline of like rebounding ability and he's big. So like maybe he's able to play like stretch four and, and rebound some, but um, again, I, I'm not like super well versed on his game. It's just another option that I think is plausible that we haven't mentioned yet. He had an 8% defensive rebounding rate last year. Oh yeah. That's not good. Uh, <laughs> that's worse than Eli. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, worse maybe than scratch Bumpkin. that, but, but oh. he has the size I was saying it was more just like a hypothetical, like we haven't mentioned his name, but yeah, yeah I mean, that's a Michigan good might have the stat. worst rebounding per inch scouting <laughs> report going into the season between like jet kobe none of these guys i think of as great rebounders so something to keep an eye on yep. um but we can keep going we're way there's like topic. two more clips i'm just yeah. random no, no, about think, rebounding over here I, I, I think that was a good topic to like conclude this with like after we went through all the clips so now we just won't conclude with it we'll just like that was the conversation like you know where is this what does this mean and stuff so it was it was well, a good conversation to have let's get through these last two clips all right, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think this one's probably enough just to catch and shoot. Yeah. But again, like what you said, like coming from in the back out, right. He had to set his feet quickly on this catch. He does a good job of it. I yeah. Think- I think he has a chance to be a very good shooter. Um, and I thought he would come in. He's more of just like a good shooter, but the volume and the types of shots he takes, like, yeah, I think he's like, maybe not right away. Um, especially if like, you know, he's more tired defensively given certain responsibilities or physicality, but he's a better shooter than I thought coming into watching him. Oh, here's, so this is the other, only other ball screen. This is an interesting one. And then there's just one clip. This is with, this is basically with the game on the line too. Um, yeah. So something to be left desired. Yep. And avoids the physicality. Because he rejects the screen, which is like, fine, he gets downhill. Yeah. But then. I, like if he finishes that with the left, I feel like it's a layup. And instead, he kind of has to come back into everyone. I mean, there's three people around him, right? Like even shooting here was probably not a good decision. But with the right, it was like, I mean, he was never going to score on this. Like best case, he was going to draw a foul. Um, yeah, well, the reject see, is- He's trying to work his way back into all the defenders because he wants to go with his right hand. He's moving yep. all the way. He's moving his body over into them instead of toward the basket. Yeah. And like the reject is like a good play. Like he gets a half step to a full step on this guy, right? His man. Um, I would have liked to see him pass it to the weak side corner. It's a tough pass moving to his left, but like this guy's wide open. Like it's also people are going to force him to reject every screen because he can't finish with his left hand. Right. Like, like the scouting report is going to be to force him to go left. Um, So that might also be why that's open. 
Yeah. And I don't, I mean, I don't know if he gets enough ball screen reps to where he has a reputation about like that sort of thing, but I mean, they will learn eventually. And yeah, I mean, he, multiple issues with this one, I think missing the pass, good reject, but he just tries to finish this in traffic. Like with the right, it's like, I mean, there's just no chance of, of finishing that. I'm surprised even like, I think it's also out. a situation where this is like, we don't really have the, clip the context to show it but like the game they had kind of been unraveling and he clearly wanted to take a shot to try to change the game and again he can get he's like right. a fiery guy but he can get a little uh what was the be i think emotionally drunk um in certain <laughs> game situations and he definitely like there are a couple plays i feel like late where he didn't get a shot and i think this was he's like okay i have the ball i'm gonna make something happen here yep and it happens to be driving into four defenders and he almost scores, but again, it's yeah, he does. a tough shot. Yeah. All right, so this is the very next possession. So they're down by – or they're up by one with 40 seconds left. Just not, not good. Again, inside and around the board. So he does a good job of helping, kind of. Um, right? Like his guy uh, – or this guy gets beat. The big comes over to help. His job is to sink below and like put his knee into 24, right? Mm -hmm. To help and for a potential rebound, which happens here. So he actually doesn't, I mean, he sees it, but he doesn't have inside position and he doesn't really fight very much at all. Like there's just no physicality to like push this guy away. So he's like free to get this rebound. Like this might be a put back dunk in other situations. Um, it still ends up being a, a basket and an and one. But, like, yeah, his job is to box this guy out. He does not do a good job of it. He doesn't have a lot of physicality. And, I mean, 40 seconds left, up by one. He gives up an and one. So, definitely not ideal. And then I think this is the play where he, like, throws a fit and then gives everyone high fives on the bench. Maybe that was – it was, might have been that, earlier. I don't think that's this one. <laughs> but he gets all mad. They call a timeout. And then uh, he, he like, collects himself and gives everyone Ooh. high fives. That was my favorite part of the game, I think. <laughs> maybe, maybe it was this then. Um, Okay, so that was really the last clip. Um, there's one more. It's just like they're down by three with 16 seconds left, and they're running out of bounds. Play for him, and he misses the three. It's a really tough shot, but just more of confirmation that they, they're comfortable with him shooting, like trying to get a three here. Um, and, then, I mean, th th this is a tough, tough shot. Like he's fading to his left, super good contest. He rises up, and I think he's trying to draw a foul there, but, yeah, he misses it, and that's – Got, he definitely <laughs> has the Euro moves. flopping flare. Look at his legs go out and just dive off the court. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, some, it just says something that they ran it for him. But, I, yeah, he's, he's trying to draw some, it. I can't blame him. Some of that in his game, um, without a doubt. But, yeah, so th that was all the clips. I think we had a good conversation about, like, his pot potential role and stuff. From this, I was definitely encouraged. I know we talked about some of the stuff he can improve on, but I think those are things like strength based and you know just focusing of the of the coaching staff on those improvement areas that he definitely has the capability to get um, better at. And I think I was especially encouraged about his like long term prospects, whether that's later in this season, next season. But like I think he has NBA potential for sure um, if he develops the right way, and he has he has a lot of skill, and I think he can help this year's team too. Um, and you know we have no way of knowing how well he's able to integrate himself but he brings an element that they don't really have and i think he'll have a role that has the potential of expanding and a lot more as the season goes on and he gets more comfortable and um you know more comfortable in the specific in the speed and physicality of the game too yeah though like the way i put it is there's little like you watch him and the things he does the size the potential of like where he can grow is like pretty obvious and i think there's clearly a path for him to be a you say a pro, I don't know, who cares about the NBA, but like a really, really good college player and a really useful yeah. role. I just have a very hard time gauging whether it's this year or next year that he like makes that leap. Because I think there's a huge, it's just a lot to adapt to as far as a new system, a new country, a more physical style of play, all these things. And there's also like competition, right? Like, it's not like there's, he's walking into a 30 minute a night starting spot. Like Franz Wagner's competition when he came was Adrian Nunez uh, and, and Franz was two and done lottery pick. So I think if you say more competition and maybe I would say he's somewhere between where Mo and Franz were, as far as like how ready they were um, mm -hmm. as far as like 
Franz played real minutes in senior professional leagues over there. Mo played in the German youth league. Uh, uh, Yusuf's mostly played in the youth league in France, which is just not quite like the same level. Right? He's not playing in a pro game. So I think that I, I think that it's just important to be patient with him, but I also think like the upside of what he can do is pretty obvious in, in a, any kind of best case scenario for Michigan this year, it'll be his on ramp merging with what Michigan is as a team somewhere in the middle of the season, right? Like I think it might be a situation that starts slow, but you need him to start finding himself this year to, for this team to reach its ceiling, not next year. Uh, Like whatever happens next year happens, but I think, whatever Michigan can get out of him and whether they can get like get him comfortable is going to be a huge X factor in, okay, this is a pretty good team to, okay, this team can be really good. And I think that he does have that importance to the roster. i just have no idea what to expect from him in like November, December, right? Like he, he didn't practice with the team. Um, someone like Isaiah Barnes or Jet Howard who had those reps, like they're going to know a lot more that he just doesn't know yet. And I think that adjustment will be interesting to watch. Yeah, I think you really hit the nail on the head with that um, and, and definitely raised some good points. Um, and I agree, I think I agree with you that um, he's somewhere between Mo and Franz. And I would say just to add that um, I think his transition should be a little bit easier because he played for Lebanon and he played more of like a you know smaller role where he's more able to integrate into the offense. And I think defensively, he's going to play a very similar role for Michigan that he played for Limages where um like as a big defender, like Mo, there's just so much more nuance. I think when you step up levels that he just wasn't very good at. And I I think, you know, physicality for sure will be a big thing for him, but just like in terms of defensive role, I think he can um, integrate himself more quickly and that should hopefully get him on the court while he adjusts offensively. And then, as you said, just like doing two or three things and, and really being good at those things, whether that's, you know, running the floor in transition and then, you know, shooting threes and attacking closeouts, like, don't put too much on his plate. Of course, he'll need to like learn the offense and stuff, but I think his integration should be easier than maybe Mo's was. And I don't think he's as ready as Franz was. So it's somewhere in between there, but I definitely think he's a contributor that can grow into more. It's just a question of how quickly he is able to do it and whether it happens this season. Yeah. The thing with Franz is like, he always looked in control of the speed of the game when he was on the court, when it was on film before he came, when he showed up, he kind of had, I feel like, a uh, control to his game. Whereas I feel like Yusuf is sort of like, if you were just to like slam on the gas and then hit the brakes, slam on the gas, hit the brakes, slam on the gas, hit the brakes. And I think it's hard to play consistent basketball until you can kind of cruise instead of just kind of the stop and start. Like he's full speed. Whenever he's doing something, he's flying around. And I think that's good but I think there's going to be a little balance to shake some of that out and also still get the benefits of it. It's a kind of a fine line. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think it's better to have that activity and rein it in than the opposite. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I agree. I agree with your point. He's definitely very active and um, we'll see how he's able to integrate and how quickly he's able to do it. Uh, but yeah, this was fun. And um, I, I think we have it at a pretty good length. So if you made it this far, we appreciate it. And uh, tell us if you liked it, uh, any conclusions you may have from seeing the clips. I mean, people look at the clips and see different things. So um, yeah, thank, thanks for watching.